I am absolutely speechless. It was the second week of having Mr. Karim book tour on the podcast. I told you guys last week he was going to hypnotize me. Well, <laughs> we've just done it tonight. And um, wow, I was a bit skeptical. No, I wasn't skeptical. I was nervous and scared. I was scared of being vulnerable. I was scared of, uh, I suppose, doing it in front of you guys. Um, but I knew if, well, if I've been doing it, if I've been getting guests to be vulnerable, it's probably okay that I do it. Um, I don't go into massive details about stuff because, you know, I have to be considerate. And, um, but it was about unlocking and unlocking fear and, 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 and approval and, and things like that. Um, but I'm speechless, man. I, I, I came off the call. I still, I we've just had a bit of a, an after chat and, uh, my brain feels weird it feels empty and i think when you see me come out of it at the end you you can really see that i'm like i kind of i'm like right now it's very bizarre i've never been hypnotized before um and when i was even coming to the end of the conversation i thought oh we're done we're we're all good I, but as soon as i kind of opened my eyes and came around and he finishes about me re-entering and coming back in here into the room that I'm sat in here in my house. And um, I opened my eyes and I just went, boom, blank. Very bizarre. Anyway, I'm going to stop talking and waffling because that's all I did after I got hypnotized and came out of it. <laughs> so I have to apologize in advance, but it's interesting. It's fascinating. Um, anyway, for the second week, listen to Karim Bokhtor. Fascinating. Become a good friend of mine. And I love his journey. Come right back and watch me being hypnotized. Amazing. See you soon. Welcome to Leading Our Own Way. I'm your host, Andrew White, and this is the podcast that unveils captivating narratives of resilience and personal triumph. This podcast is for anyone seeking inspiration and insights on overcoming life's challenges. Follow and subscribe, and then we can lead together forever. Hello there, everybody. Welcome back to Leading Our Own Way. I've got my man, Karim Bokhtor, back for episode two. We've got a special episode for you today. It's my turn to be, to be vulnerable, but before we go any further, how are you doing, Karim? How are you, mate? I'm great, mate. How are you? Thanks for having me on. Oh, I've been nervous all week, not going to lie. <laughs> Why is that? Because you're going to hypnotize me. <laughs> I never done this before in my life mm. so yeah a bit nervous about that mate i was nearly cancelling on you no i'm joking i wasn't <laughs> i wasn't never gonna do that uh, no i'm super excited but nervous at the same time um i'm you know i have so many people including yourself who as a you know been vulnerable on on leading our own way and i suppose it's my turn to be vulnerable and uh let the master take over in in his skill set and we all obviously heard last week what you do but before we do go i suppose into it um for those who didn't watch last week's episode which should go back and watch it for sure but give a quick explanation for the for the people just tuning in a little bit about yourself and, and what you do i'm a leadership and business hypnotherapist um i help people get out of their own way by getting into their subconscious and removing the mental and, emo and emotional blockages that are holding them back. Yeah. Um, people think that it's often a business issue or a lack of ice baths or, you know, mantras or um, any of those types of things. You know, they attend a Tony Robbins event to try and get out of their own way. They get hyped and pumped. They read a book. And then a week or two later, everything's back to to the way it is. So I help um, give lasting impressions by rewiring the subconscious. Nice. Yeah. So it's, it's really going deep and unlocking inside, isn't it? Yeah. Releasing the relief valve somewhere hidden in our, I don't know if it's arteries or cells at the cellular <laughs> yeah. level, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Um, 
it's fascinating because I, you know, as, as we mentioned last week, I'm doing a lot of reading around the brain and the neural pathways. I, f- I find it absolutely fascinating. Just a pa- side passion of mine. We're mm-hmm. doing it professionally every day. And I, I should probably come to some of your events and watch you do it live maybe one day. For sure. That'd be a, actually, that's a great idea. We've never discussed that. I'd love to do that. <laughs> you're under pressure oh, now. You have to say, yeah, because you're on air. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, you just said get out of, our, get out of your own way. I love that. We're on leading our own way. We should create a podcast. Get out of your yeah, own right way. way. Hey, there we go. Mm. Just create a new idea. We don't need to add more work to our ske- uh, busy schedule, do we? But <laughs> we've got a backup if everything else fails. <laughs> All right. Um, so it's over to you. Uh, you're now the host of uh, Leading Our Own Way. I'm going to relinquish some of the uh, <laughs> all the control over to you. It seems. Um, cool. Where do you want me and how do I start? Do I lie down? What What do I do? <laughs> <laughs> like you, I was fine. I'm just going to ask you some questions just before we begin. Um, what is the some? What is the what is the one thing at the moment that's getting in your way? Oh man. Probably the approval side of things Mm -hmm. and probably her. Her. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Um, Can you tell me more about approval? Is it like needing approval from others? I think from friends, from peers. I, I, you know, I think moving to Australia, I try to connect. And I'll, sometimes I reflect and probably go over connect a little bit. Um, we, I think we've discussed that before. I've definitely said it to somebody. Um, I forgot where I was going with it now because I've got a million things going through my head. Uh, but, you yeah, know, I think <laughs> approval from, I think every every genre of category of people in my life, you know, mm-hmm. when I've worked in the workplace, leaders, I needed to know that I was doing the right thing. Mm-hmm. Um, probably lost confidence in worrying if I was doing the right thing opposed to just going for it. Yep. I'd, um, I say I wouldn't do that now. I'm not in that position because I'm freelancing myself, but maybe I would. Maybe I'd fall back into that crack. I say I wouldn't, but maybe I would. Mm-hmm. Um, approval from friends for sure. Um you know, I probably hurt myself by moving to Australia a little bit because you, you're not around the friends that I grew up with. Yep. Um, that does hurt when, especially when I don't, I don't speak to them all that often. Mm-hmm. Um, I am a person that tries really hard to stay in touch with people. Um, and for sure, yeah, approval from everybody in life. Yeah, to know, to have that reassurance that you, you know, you're doing the right thing, or you're seeking validation from people for sure. Yeah. yeah. And this seem, might seem like an obvious question, but um, how is this a problem in your professional and career? I don't know. I don't. I don't know if it should be a problem. Should it prob- Should it be a problem? Um, what would life be like without seeking approval? Easier, smoother. Cool. A lot so smoother. So how is it a problem today? Makes you second guess yourself. Yeah. Yeah. There was a bit of a light bulb moment there for you. You reckon? <laughs> I saw something. Yeah. <laughs> oh God, I'm going to sweat. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Okay. So life, so what would life without needing the approval of others be like? Breath of fresh air. Cool. Okay. And when you think about um, needing approval, what are the emotions that come up with needing approval? Well, so, if I got if, a, so if I got approval, what would I feel? Do you if mean? like you feeling like you need to approve, to have that approval from someone, what is the thing that drives you? What is the emotion that drives that behavior? (laughs) 
you probably haven't been aware or conscious of it. But as humans, we do things based on our emotions. Mm-hmm. So, um, what would be the emotion that drives you to want to give that to to seek that approval? Is it the fear? Could be. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Fear of what? Fear of getting it wrong. Good. Um, yeah, maybe. I'm cool. Trying th- I'm trying to think if there's anything more to it. Yeah. It might come to me the more we go into it. No, that's okay. You're doing, this is, this is awesome. This okay. is really good. Okay. So a fear, so you need to get it right. So you possibly don't get in trouble by your teacher or something. Yes, that was definitely the case a long time ago, even up to the many years ago. But since I've kind of gone on my own journey with turning my career and in the teaching career, going to a casual teacher in order to write the book and to do the podcast, no plugging intended there. But (laughs) um, I think that's kind of changed into, I suppose, acknowledgement, trying to get, I suppose, getting acknowledgement and going, you're doing, you're doing the right thing. What's, I can see that you're doing the right thing for you, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Because what's happening inside for you to seek that acknowledgement? What's happening inside? Is that that fear again? Yeah, lack of confidence. Yeah, which is fear. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So there's a there is a um there is this pattern of fear. So as you can see, we're sitting in a room, um, you know, or you're at work, but your body thinks that you're in fight or flight, mm-hmm. and it's imagined, right? And there's nothing. It's and it's not your fault. So you're constantly looking for safety, which to you is possibly approval to, to, to let you know that you are safe and that you are okay. But in your subconscious mind, cause see what happens is from the age of zero to seven, and you would know more than, more than me about this, right? So you can school me, but this is the imprint stage. It, it's, it's a very formative um, it's a very important year. Uh, they are very important years in a child. This is where they create their map of the world, how they make sense of the world. From seven to 10. From, yeah, from seven, it's from, um, from what I understand, it's from zero, zero to seven. Oh yeah. Sorry. Um, but yeah, it can go all the way up to 14. Right. But these are the, these are the most formative years. Mm-hmm. And what happens is that as children, we, we make sense of the world. So we like, so we put all the puzzles together. So a piece of puzzle, because we spent most of our time at school, like primary school or at kinder, this is where a lot of kids make sense of the world there. So if they're constantly getting in trouble by a teacher, they're constantly needing that approval to feel safe. So now they think that the world is not a safe place and for them to feel safe, they need that approval. And this is then how they're wiring their, their brain, their, their, their subconscious, the association to safety is approval. Yeah. Yeah. And we can be 50 years old, right. And still running that program as that five or seven year old did and people don't even know because it sits in the in the subconscious like there's no amount of books that you can read to get to your subconscious Uh, unless i don't know i don't i don't i don't know of any anyway but there could be a book Mm -hmm. um talk therapy usually doesn't get to your subconscious um as i was saying before a tony robbins event doesn't get to to your subconscious um, you know, 
a leadership course usually doesn't get to your subconscious. So even though we try and get out of our own way by doing all these amazing things, unless you really get into your subconscious, nothing really changes. And you will see evidence of this today. Because what I will be doing is I'll be asking you, Andrew, thinking of times in the past where you felt fear. You don't have to tell me what they are, but you're just going to know them. Um, you're going to tell me maybe you th there are some, maybe there are like five or six big moments in your life that you can remember that as you remember them, there is some fear in those memories. And then after the session, I'm going to go back and ask you, Hey, Andrew, do you remember those, um, those memories or those events that you pri um, that you said that you, f that you felt fear, can you feel fear? In can you feel f fear there anymore? And you, and, and you, you'll notice that you'll say no. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. So what that means is there's all these, there's a book called your body keeps the school. Have you heard of that book? I think I have. Yeah. Yeah. And what it, what it really basically says is that every event in your life, um, whether positive or negative, your, your body keeps it, keeps it stored. So in the cases of you feeling fear as an emotion, this holds energy in, in, in your body. So when it's no longer there, it's a huge weight lifted on your nervous system, your body, just in general. And since that your past is without fear, your outlook into your future is likely without fear. <laughs> Like the sound of that. <laughs> so, can you think of events in your head, key significant events that have, um, that you remember feeling fear? 100%. Yep. How many? Just so I can come back and say, hey, do you remember you, th you feeling five of them or whatever it is, three, two? Um, just because you may come back and you may forget <laughs> that's all. Yeah, no. Um, and I can do ones in the last, in the, in, as an adult as well, right? It, all of them. Yeah. Which ones are the most significant? Yeah. Join us tomorrow to hear more from today's incredible guests and learn valuable insights to help you lead your own way. Don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you then.